I'm Charlotte, and this is Chatting with Charlotte, where I share conversations, life hacks, and inspirations to help you on your healing journey from childhood trauma. So today I'm going to continue in the series that I started earlier this month, Grief is Complicated. And today we're going to talk about when anniversaries blindside you. And as you can see from the little picture on the slide, grief really is not a linear process. And so it's going to blindside you on occasion. And this year was one of those times for me where I was blindsided by grief. Next Monday is the uh, eighth anniversary of John's death. And as that date approached, I realized that this year has been different. I really didn't know that it was actually affecting me as much as it was until, oh, about a week into what was going on. I was overreacting to things. I was obsessing about things that really had I, just, it was just kind of ridiculous, really, because it really didn't make sense. It was things that I don't normally get upset about anymore. It was things that uh, don't normally bother me, but I made a mistake. Uh, which was, I mean, we all make mistakes, right? Well, I made a mistake. And as a result, not everybody got to watch my book launch live. And I obsessed about the mistake I made for two or three days. And I just could not let it go. And I kept saying, well, if I'd done this or if I'd done that, and, you know, I all kinds of negative self-talk. And what, I, but then I had a, a kind of an a, aha moment. Uh, one morning as I was thinking about that and I realized that what I was probably doing was I was projecting my feelings of grief and bargaining around the time that John died onto that little silly thing. And I was putting my energy into that when in reality what was going on in my subconscious is I was re-experiencing the bargaining I felt right after John died. And it really, I think that actually was what was happening because once I realized that, I was able to really let that go. And it wasn't a big deal to me anymore. So that's just one example. I was also, I found myself being uh, reacting to people in different ways. Uh, when I got together with my friends here at the apartment complex that I live in and uh, I was overreacting to comments. And again, it was like I was getting triggered by things that reminded me of my relationship with John and different things that had gone on in our relationship, both good and bad. And, and once I actually realized that, then I was able to really experience the emotions around uh, those events as they related to John. And I uh, was able to then begin to deal with them in a more healthy way. And that's the second point I want to make is that once you realize that grief has blindsided you around an anniversary or just because of all kinds of different things, then it's important that you figure out a way to manage it. And one of the ways you can do that is to find a friend or, or a family member that, you, that will let you just talk about your loved one the good things, the bad things, but just talk. And so that's what I did. And I, and it wasn't a planned thing. We were just in a conversation and I just started talking about him. And that really helped because it's kind of, it was a way of reconnecting with him and sharing it with someone that really did not know him. And uh, so it was like sharing a piece of my life with someone and it allowed me to uh, process that. And also it's important that you allow yourself to cry, that you allow yourself to be angry if you need to and do all of those things, but don't get, don't stay there. Be sure that you have someone that's going to help you get through those. That's going to help you move past them because these are just little moments as that even happen many, many years later, because we have an internal clock that kind of the alarm goes off and all of a sudden we're back there and it can happen at any moment, any time. So those are the ways that concrete ways. Now, just in anticipation of different anniversary dates, for example, uh, 
a, a, a wedding anniversary or something like that, there are certain concrete things that you can do to recreate your experience or revamp your experience around those dates. And one of the things that I have done is on our on John and I's anniversary, we would always go to Red Lobster to celebrate. He loved fish. I hated fish. And so on, on our anniversary, we would go so that he could have endless shrimp. So when, after he passed and I moved to uh, Santa Fe, Texas to be close to my family, I started a tradition of taking them out to eat on or around our anniversary at to Red Lobster. And so it changed uh, the experience to one of sharing things with my family and being in a uplifting and energetic environment. And we always have a great time. So that's just, you know, a very simple example of things that, of a thing, concrete thing that you can do to make anniversaries less stressful. So I hope those things were helpful to you. And uh, I look forward to uh, talking to you again. Probably we'll be sharing a, a couple of more times about grief. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Let me know what you think about the new look. And I will talk to you again soon. Bye now.